everybody, my name is Asia and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a reading vlog for Bookopolathon, the 48 hour round. So I'm so excited for this round of Bookopolathon and I participated the other times, I just never vlogged it because I was doing so many live sprints for those. Honestly, I don't remember. I was probably fucked up. Yeah, I was crazy back then. <laughs> but since Becca has scheduled this all out for the whole thing to be live, I'm only going to be live for four hours. So I was like, why not do a vlog? I'm actually still in the middle of a book that I'm going to need to finish because it's for the Kindle clear out, which ends tonight. Um, at midnight and it's called float plan by Trisha Dollar. I'm not gonna really talk about that too much in this vlog But I will link my review down below because this is an arc that I need to review if you want to see more of my thoughts on it But I won't be talking about it in that much depth because it literally doesn't have to do with any of the prompts I have an hour and a half left and I'm listening on 3.5 speed So it should take me less than half an hour to finish and so that's like the thing that I plan on finishing first I'm not gonna be going along with the reading sprints too much just because I like to read on my own time and I usually don't want like to keep stopping and hearing them talk so it depends on how much talking they're going to actually be doing i'm hoping they won't be doing too much just because you know we're in our readathon so we need to get a lot of reading in so for the first role she obviously did two prompts she did dark cover and fantasy and so i decided to go with the fantasy i might complete another book for this prompt depending on how quickly and what time i finish this my goal is to try and do like three to four books and so i'm not going to push myself too much i do want to take breaks watch some criminal minds watch some bob's burgers do some um, schoolwork, edit a little bit. I'm not trying to be reading 24 7 because my brain just can't do that. What up? I'm Jared, I'm 19, and I never fucking learned how to read. So I'm going to be probably picking a lot of short books, but I'm going to be going with A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Mass. So before this vlog, I should have posted my reading vlog for the first three books of this, and I'm going to be vlogging the last book, but I feel like it'd be weird to include this in the next vlog with A Court of Silver Flames, so I just decided to include it in this vlog. So in that way, technically, I will be vlogging every single book in this series. It's just going to be split up over three different vlogs but yes this book is super short it's technically a novella and the audiobook for this is on hoopla so i'm going to be doing that i believe it's only like six hours and i listen on three times speed so i should be able to finish this tonight because i don't go to sleep until like 3 a.m and then i probably will hopefully try to wake up at eight or nine so that i can start on the second roll but i definitely want to finish this tonight and then i probably won't do the dark cover prompt but i may do two prompts tomorrow and i actually made a whole list in my notes of books that i'm interested in that are shorter i've never done this before i normally just try and pick books but i notice that i can get kind of burnt out because i pick a lot of um like 300 page ya fantasy and like that's not my favorite it just fits the prompt i have this list of books that are short that i have access to like the audiobooks of and that i need to read or that i'm really interested in so in that way i have something to reference when I'm thinking about these prompts and I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven books besides this one so hopefully I will have a book from this for every prompt and there are some that I'm hoping for more than others I got coffee and I have some soda downstairs but I'm actually really rested today because my first period teacher canceled class well when life gives you lemons so we love a good rest. I just want to show you guys that the readathon has officially started. It is eight o'clock, everybody. So happy Becca's Bookopolathon, and I will come back to you guys when I have some updates in my reading. I hope this isn't too shaky because I'm literally holding the camera. But I finished the book I was reading, Float Plan. It is now midnight because I was watching some other live shows, had to deal with some other stuff, had to eat. So I finally finished it and I wrote the review for it. And I was also talking in the chat for my Bookopolathon sprints because I was talking about a game that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to listen to the audiobook of A Court of Frost and Starlight because it's on Hoopla. So I'm going to listen to this as I said. And I'm going to like post my review on NetGalley and everything like that. 
and then I'm going to work on a list for the game because basically we're playing bookish taboo so I need to make the list and I haven't really had time to think about any games or anything throughout the week because this week has been so chaotic and busy so I'm just gonna work on that now while listening to the audiobook and yeah that's it I'm trying not to do like the same angle every time so um that's why i'm holding the camera because i was like "Ooh, like a little bit of a different moment so yeah i ended up giving that book four out of five stars i really really liked it um but it was a little bit short so i felt like the characters and things weren't developed but the themes in it hit me so hard it was honestly ridiculous um I really do recommend and as I said I have a review on it that I can link down below and I will also be talking about it in my wrap up obviously whenever I get around to posting that it won't be at the end of the month but it'll be sometime in April probably why the fuck you lying why you always lying oh my god so yeah, as I said, I'm going to work on all that while listening to this and it is midnight. So after I finish this, I'll probably watch like one episode of Criminal Minds or a couple episodes of um, Bob's Burgers and then head to sleep because I do want to be up a little bit earlier so I can catch the next prompt. And I don't want to not sleep because I feel like if I do that, I'm going to be exhausted for the sprints tomorrow. So I do want to sleep. But yeah, I'm having like a really good time so far, even though I literally did not like even read a book for this yet but the, just the vibes that i get during this readathon are just so lovely but yeah i will come back to you guys when i make it a bit more through this <laughs> here's some crystals in the background for you guys um but i okay not dropping things um so i finish a court of frost and starlight and i decided to give this book four stars i know a lot of people don't really like this novella because it's kind of pointless what was the reason what was the reason what was the reason and trust me that is valid this book literally has no point like not a single one okay like really nothing um but i'm just such a character driven reader and i'm so attached to these characters i specifically get attached to characters in fantasy romance or fantasy i don't really get attached to characters in like normal romances as much but i'm so attached to these characters in general and seeing them just go about mundane tasks and their daily lives really just made me feel fuzzy and fluffy on the inside you know like they literally did nothing except you know had some presents did a little moment of like a christmas and i was here for it honestly i really liked seeing it this had a lot of smut in it which i know a lot of people complain about because they're like they're it's just it's just smut so like what's the point but you know what i like smut sue me sue me what the fuck is up kyle no what did you say dude? what the fuck dude step the fuck up if you don't like smut if you don't like just reading smut I understand that's not for you but I enjoyed it okay okay I, I don't know what else to say I like smut 
So a book with my favorite characters that has a lot of smut in it was <laughs> A plus. Big boobs. What? Um, ciao. Anyway, so it was fantastic, fantabulous. It was a good time. Like, is this a full five star? Definitely not because it was just, it was fun. It was there. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Also, you could probably hear my voice is like a little, a little raspy, okay? Because I'm getting tired. The coffee, the caffeine, she, she went down, okay? I was so hyper. And you know what happens? You hit that crash, okay? And I hit it. I hit it like two hours ago, but I was like, no we are finishing her okay so i finished her and i know one copy is like 272 pages but this one is only 240 um so i read about 240 pages and then i read about 70 pages of the other book so i'm at a total of about 310 pages so far which is really amazing so i'm hoping my goal i would really hope to get to like a thousand pages but i'm reading some shorter books so I don't know and so this is not really dark cover kind of but not really so i was going to re finish reading the ballad of black tom because i started it a couple months ago and i never finished it and it's a short story it has like a mostly black cover but honestly i'm so exhausted i'm gonna try to get up at eight or nine so i literally have like five hours so i'm gonna try and go sleep why don't you want to take in the water i'm taking a nap you want to take a nap i'm taking a nap here okay take a nap right there then good night Good night. Anyways, just wanted to update you guys on this, and I will see you guys in the morning. Hi, my friends. It is the morning. It is 8.47. Yes, I slept in this. This is my pajamas. That's why I was in it last night. Okay. Um, I will change. I promise. But I'm comfy. <laughs> so it's 8.47. Um, I did wake up around 8, like 8, 10, 8, 15, but I'm so tired. I've just been waking up because I literally couldn't fall asleep. I stayed up till 4 and then I was like, no, like I really have to go to sleep because I wasn't that tired anymore. And then I laid there for a long time. Don't know how long though. So I basically took a nap. So I'm probably going to take another nap before my sprints later, but I do want to get some reading in first. Um, Ashley's live right now, but I was not watching it because I was not being productive because I was just waking up. And so, since I woke up at like 8.15, I missed the roll drops on hers, but I, um, obviously I watched them on the Twitter, so the prom 3 for the Bogopolathon board was POC Rep, um, which is featuring characters of color or written by an author of color, and then the fourth prompt, which was for the 2021 board, was um, contemporary. I know that for the um, POC rep, I'm going to read The Ballad of Black Tom, like I told you guys yesterday about that book. Um, it's written by a black man. The main character is a black man. So I'm going to finish this up. Um, it literally is like an hour long. So I'm going to finish this up. And then for contemporary, I have a couple option so i don't know what i've decided yet good girl bad blood is one that i've really been wanting to read and the chase is for my book club so i need to read it but i don't know what i'm gonna read for that maybe i can do a poll yeah okay but i'm going to do that and then i'm gonna start the ballad of black tom again i have it on my kindle and i also have the audiobook i'm sorry i'm not that enthusiastic i'm so tired i don't like being sleep deprived um but yeah i am going to get to reading and i will come back to you guys when i make progress slash finish something hi guys i got ready it is it is 2 41 my sprint starts soon in an hour and 20 minutes i put some glitter on as usual yes we're in my kitchen yes we're in my kitchen because I don't want to squat anymore but my sprints start soon and I was not nervous at last night some of the other people who are gonna be guests said that they were nervous but I was like nah I'm not nervous I'm actually pooping my pants right now because almost every single live like five consecutive lives in a row have had 1.1 K people watching and I'm not even used to having a hundred people watching my lives um, let alone a thousand so even if it's more than like 300 like I think that I will die and freak out and then everybody's saying that I'm gonna hit 2k tonight 
<laughs> that is not correct. Because according to the encyclopedia of um, and I will actually cry if that occurs, and I will simply disintegrate and pass away. So, I'm nervous, but I have two updates for you guys. I did finish The Ballad of Black Tom. I ended up giving it four stars. I liked it, but I really liked the historical and commentary elements a lot more than the fantasy elements. I feel like if I read Lovecraft before, I would have liked it more. And then I actually ended up listening to... Um, Flow by Kennedy Ryan, which is the prequel to Grip, and they say that you should read it before, so I did, and it was about four hours long, and I loved it. I think I'm actually going to give it five stars. I haven't rated it on Goodreads or anything yet, um, but I really, really liked it. It had amazing commentary, and I've never read from the perspective of a black man before, I don't think. I mean, I did in The Ballad of Black Tom, but like, I th I can't even, I don't even pay attention to perspectives like third and first person like that, but Flo was in first person and it was like a modern black man first person. I think I have before, but like he was very frank, very, sounded like a man, but like, but I liked it a lot because it was dual point of view and it was just honestly really, really good. Created so much angst, intention, and set up an amazing story that I definitely need to continue. All of the audiobooks are on Hoopla, so <laughs> I'm really excited to continue because it was so good. Everybody says it's good, but it was really, it was so good. Um, yeah, so I am actually going to read Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson next, which is the second book to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which is one of my favorite books ever. And everybody says that Good Girl, Bad Blood is even better. So I'm going to start that one next. Um, technically, I've completed both the POC prompt because both authors are POC. And then I completed the contemporary prompt with Flo. And then even Dark Cover was completed by The Ballad of Black Tom. So this one kind of doesn't count for anything. It could count for contemporary because it's a thriller, so it's in a contemporary setting. Um, and I'm hoping to finish it on my sprints. Um, so I'm going to start it and then hopefully finish it on my sprints. And then the next roll drop will be in the sprints right after mine. So then I will be able to pick some new books. I don't know what they're gonna be, obviously, um, but I'm really, really, really excited. And yeah, I'm so nervous for these sprints. Like, you don't understand, like, the possibility that a thousand people could be watching me at one time is actually nerve-wracking. And my parents don't understand. I've been telling them, and they're like, you're gonna do fine, like, ee, whatever. Damn. Kim, you're doing amazing, push the, sweetie. Push this knee out. Hot. That's push, 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 push. Uh, you don't understand like I'm nervous. Okay. I'm nervous. Oh, let me show you my dog. Let's go see him Hi guys, I'm back I did my reading sprints. I know some of the other guests updated during the sprints. I chose not to, but I hit 2.1k. Two days ago, I hit like 1.8k. So I literally gained 300 subscribers almost exclusively today. I did get a couple before, but like I literally got almost 300 subscribers just today, which is absolutely insane. Thank you to everybody who subscribed to me just in general. Some of you guys are OGs, some of you guys are new, but I'm just so grateful to have all of you. And I love the vibes that were in my reading spreads. Everybody was so supportive of each other because we were all people with smaller channels. So Everybody was subscribing to each other. So many people hit milestones. Like, Jan was less than 800, and now she's over 1K. Like, that's phenomenal. And, like, so many people hit milestones. Oh, Sarah's FaceTiming me. Hi. Hi. I was updating my vlog. Oh! There's Sarah. Okay, so, talking about my progress that I made in the book during the sprints is I got to page 288. So... I have like a little over 100 pages left, maybe like 140, so I need to finish this first. A lot of this is kind of a blur because the sprints were just so crazy, which I loved, but I probably will reread this at some time just because I don't particularly remember books that I read that quickly um, super well, so I might reread this at some point. So I'm going to be finishing this first, and then 
obviously the roll drops just happened so the first one was to pick a first book in a series so i have actually have a couple i have desperate measures live and let chai um i read flow by kennedy ryan but now i can read grip technically still house lake i can read any of those but i think i'm gonna go with desperate measures because i have the physical book and I also have the audiobook, and that's the one that's calling to me the most. And then, obviously, the second one is to get a number of books that you do want to read and that you don't want to read and put them somehow and randomly pick them. So that's what Sarah and I are going to figure out together right now. So I will come back to you guys when I have my books. And, okay, I've come back with things. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the ones that I don't want to read. I put five and five. So the first one is one of the good ones, which is an arc that I need to review. But if I didn't have it as an arc, I would never read it. But the audiobook came in from my library. So that's why I'm putting on here. Still don't really want to read it. Then I put the Echo Wife. Um, I have to read this for a book club, but Sarah thinks that I won't like it and she didn't like it. So then I put Live and Let Chai, which is a cozy mystery. And the only reason I'm putting this on here is because it's summery. So I was saving it for the summer. So I don't really want to read it right now. Then I put the black flamingo because, you know... Me and Wyatt definitely don't get along. Go suck a dick, suck a dick, suck a motherfucking dick. Suck a dick, suck a huge or small. And then I put the handmaid's tale because I started it for school, never finished it, so I have associated it with school. For the ones that I do want to read, I put Call Me Maybe, which is a short little audible original, I think. And it's literally so short, so that's why I put it. I want to read and I've heard good things. Then I put Carrie because it's only seven hours and I have the audiobook. Then I put Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. Again, only six hours. Sorry if you can hear noise. That's Sarah. And then I put The Chase by L. Kennedy because I have the audiobook and it's for a book club. So I need to read and I'm excited. Like I wanted to add a little bit of romance. And then I put Still House Lake because I've heard amazing things about this and everybody thinks I'm really going to like this thriller. It is a little bit longer, about 10 hours, but I do like this is really high on my TBR. Okay, I'm going to pick my book. The Black Flamingo! Okay, I didn't want to read this, but it's short, so. <laughs> so I'm back at this angle because I couldn't think of another one. And it is currently like almost 2 a.m. on technically Sunday, Saturday night. And I've been working on my roles in previous books. So I did end up finishing Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. And I gave this five out of five stars. I know a lot of people say they like this book more than the first one. And I personally still like the first one better. But I did really like this one. Still five out of five stars. I think I would like this more if I didn't read it on my sprints. Just because I was so distracted by everybody hitting milestones and everything like that. I feel like I could have paid more attention. So I definitely think that I'm going to reread this sooner than later um but i did really really enjoy it. i love the mixed media elements in here i love how it included like pictures of evidence and with the audiobook how they do interviews is so amazing i love how it sounds and i really love pip in this book i especially relate to pip in this book i already identify as pip like but in this book she's a little bit more aggressive a little bit more angry and i relate to that more she's not as sweet as she is in the first book so i really related to her a little bit more on this because i don't care about my haters and if you want to fight me then fight me and as you guys saw in the last clip that i did i talked about the previous two roles that dropped the first one was pick a first book in a series and the other one was chance card so the first book in a series i went with desperate measures by katie roberts and i'm about 90 pages into this so far um not super far the audiobook is a little over seven hours and i'm about three so almost halfway done and this is um interesting to say the least obviously it's really steamy i knew that and this is consensual non-consent but it's very clear that it's consensual non-consent and like they have like a safe word and everything and it's being done really really well and i'm kind of enjoying like this world like i'm still a little bit confused because it's kind of modern day like she has an iud and things like that but then she was like kept in basically a castle um her whole life but it's more like it seems like more of like a mafia underground powerful people type world but her being like locked up and stuff kind of seemed like more like royalty to me so 
I'm still trying to understand the world a little bit more, but it's very interesting so far. Um, the only thing is I'm listening to this as an audiobook and I don't like Jafar's perspective as an audiobook. Um, his voice is really raspy, which is fine, but it sounds a little bit weird. And then I have not started The Black Flamingo. I definitely will not start this until tomorrow or like when I wake up because I'm going to probably go to sleep soon. And so I'll probably finish these two early tomorrow after the last rolls drop and then I will try and finish two books for those rolls but I don't I don't think I'll be able to honestly I think I'm going to fit in one more book besides these and honestly I'm fine with that so hopefully I can get a book that covers both those prompts and yeah it's 2 a.m so I'm probably going to go to sleep within the next half an hour to hour and then wake up at around eight or nine um and then as I said finish these up together these are about seven ish hours and i'm listening on three times speed so a little over two hours um and i'm actually currently sprinting with miss sarah she's right there um yeah we're just sprinting together we're not actually live or anything we're just sprinting but yeah i just wanted to update you guys really quick Hi guys, it is the next day and it's actually 1.11 in the afternoon. Alert, alert. I'm very stuffed up in this clip so if I sniffle, sneeze, or rub my nose that's why. Allergy season is a bitch. Because I actually stayed up. Sarah motivated me to stay up to 4am to finish this. So I did end up finishing Desperate Measures and I did really like it. Um, I think I'm going to give it either a 4 or 4.5. I haven't decided yet, but I really, <laughs> this was really steamy and I liked the ending and I like how Jasmine balanced kind of wanting to give in to, you know, being controlled and like kind of not feminist values, but also balancing it with taking control of her own life, being a feminist, things like that. And I really liked how that was done in here and how Jafar respected that and yeah i just like seeing the underworld and i feel like this world is going to be a lot more developed in the later books so i'm really excited to continue on considering that all of these if not all of them are on hoopla as audiobooks so i'm really excited to continue with this i haven't started the black flamingo yet but this is for my chance card so i'm going to do this next the audiobook is less than four hours so it should take me a little over an hour to read this i'm not really that excited for this um, just because I'm not in the mood for YA Contemporary. I'm never really in the mood for YA Contemporary, but it's short, so that's good. And I think that I would like the, you know, premise. I just don't think it's going to be something I think about a lot. And I did wake up at around 8 a.m. to figure out the next roll drops. And so it is pick a book from a genre that you don't really read and then pick a book that's like realistic or takes place in like a realistic time period 
So then for pick a book in a genre that you don't really read, I'm going to be doing The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I already read two thirds of this for school a while ago, so it'd be nice to just wrap this up and it'll be a lot quicker. And I do have the audio of this and I don't really read futuristic things in general. The only one that I really read is Scythe and I used to read them a lot when I was younger because Dystopian, you know, was huge. There was like Divergent the Hunger Games, um, Shatter Me, but I barely even read them now. Like I don't, I don't think I even read one last year. So I decided to go with this. Okay, it's not the realistic prompt. It's set in present day or like not necessarily this year, but like, you know, this kind of time. My camera cut out, but I said that I was going to count the black flamingo for this prompt too. Because I slept, I'm not tired. And Bob's Burgers and Good Girls comes on tonight. So I'm really excited about that. So I will probably update you guys tomorrow anyways. Like not do it tonight just because <laughs> I'm gonna be resting. That's all the updates that I have. And I am gonna go get reading because I have a lot of it to do. And you guys can tell I'm a little bit more like, eh, like a little bit not tired even because I'm not tired, but like just like worn out, you know? Anyways, I'm going to go get to reading now. So the Bookopolathon is officially over. It is actually Tuesday. I was so tired yesterday from, I had a Bookopolathon hangover, one might say. So I decided to update today and yeah, I had so much fun and thank you so much to Becca, obviously, for not only hosting it, but letting me host sprints and then bringing on a whole bunch of smaller creators to grow their channels. And then I went on during like the not safe for work bookopolathon after party, which was really fun. I just had such an amazing experience. I have an amazing experience every time, but this time was really special to me and I had such a good time. So I just wanted to wrap up all the books I read because some of them I never even updated on. Uh, I think the last thing I updated on was Desperate Measures, but uh, I did read more. So I'm going to talk to you guys about what I read overall and then update on the last few books. So the first book that I read for Bookopolathon was actually Float Plan, which doesn't count for any of the prompts. It was just a book that I needed to finish up. It could fit in for the prompts, but like I finished it before I even knew those roles, so I'm not counting it for any of those. And this was an arc that I had. I really, really like this. It's basically about this woman and her fiance died and her and her fiance had this plan to travel the world on this boat so she decides after about a year where she's just grieving this whole time to go follow out his plan and so she takes his boat and starts traveling around then she hires this man to help her because she realized like she doesn't know enough about boating and sailing to survive so she hires a man to help her you know finish her journey there is a romance this is extremely short i read about 70 pages of this for Bookopolathon and I gave this book four stars. I really really liked it a lot. I think the themes really connected with me and were really potent but I wish that the characters in the rom romance were a little bit fleshed out. I think that this book could have done with like a pretty bittersweet ending and not been classified as a romance at all. I wish that I didn't have a happily ever after. That's not really a spoiler because all romances have a happily ever after but I kind of wish this didn't because I think it would have hit home a little bit harder. The next book that I read was A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Mass. I ended up giving this four stars as well and I really like this. I know this is kind of hit or miss within the Akatar community fandom whatever you want to call it because it kind of doesn't have a point it's very pointless um people recommended this to set up a court of silver flames but i don't really think that it's necessary i haven't started a court of silver flames but i don't see what i would have not known already but i just love this because i love seeing my characters going about their daily lives like this group is probably some of my favorite characters ever and so just seeing them do like their daily things and like getting into the groove of life after the events of the previous books just really was so wonderful to see and I just enjoyed it and I really like seeing Nesta and Cassian in here so I can see why it's kind of a setup. I don't think that it was necessary but seeing their little interactions was interesting. This definitely made me super excited to read A Court of Silver Flames which I'm actually going to start either today or tomorrow. And this counted for the prompt fantasy. And then for the dark cover prompt I decided to go with The Ballad of Black Tom which I started back in November or December but I never finished it and I got about 20% of the way in and then I decided to restart it and just reread it because it is a short story. I ended up giving this book 3.5 stars. I really like the commentary that it had and just the way that it went about. I loved the writing in here. It was so whimsical and magical and, it, and, and everything about it was just phenomenal. I loved the writing so much and I really liked the historical aspects. Just the fantasy aspects weren't my favorite and 
I think maybe if I have read Lovecraft before this would have been better because I've never read that and this is actually look kind of like a commentary or like a response to Lovecraft and yeah at some points with the fantasy parts I was just a little bit confused but I think that this did the historical aspects in the writing and the commentary extremely well and this is kind of hard to describe honestly I would go into it with very little expectations but in this we follow a black man who lives in New York City and I believe this is kind of like 1920s 30s time I'm not exactly sure because it doesn't really ever explicitly say even even in the synopsis of the book but he delivers magical items to people and he kind of delivers this one item that reels him in deeper into dark magic and this is a horror but I think it's more dark fantasy I did classify it as horror like in my spreadsheet and everything but to me it was more dark fantasy than horror but I did really like it I just wish that some things were explained a little bit more the next book that I read was Flow by Kennedy Ryan and this is the first Kennedy Ryan book that I ever read and it was so good. It's actually a novella and this kind of for the prompt contemporary and I adored this. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. So this is actually the prequel to the book Grip and there's a duology but it's basically a romance that has to do with the music industry and it is like a biracial romance so the woman is white and the man is black and it's written by a black woman author and so everybody says to read the prequel because it's really helpful to set up the story because basically in the first book I haven't read the first book so <laughs> I'm not sure but in the first book it's kind of like the two main characters reconnecting after a couple years ago they had these nights together and like this time that they spent together and so the prequel is basically following those nights that they had together so it gives more context to their relationship and what actually happened so you can read the first book so that's why I read this one first and I think that I'm actually going to do like a author try on Kennedy Ryan because I love this book so much and she has a lot of different series so I think I'm gonna do an author try for her because this was just so phenomenal and it was so good I really recommend it was amazing like chef's kiss and flow counter for the prompt POC rep. So then for the next prompt, which was contemporary, I decided to go with Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson because this is a thriller, so it is contemporary. And I give this book five stars. I adored the first one. If you guys didn't know, I I talk about it all the time. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is one of my favorites of all time. And I still really, really like this one. A lot of people like this one more than the first one, which I can see. I think that I was just reading this during my reading sprints, which was honestly a crazy time. So I think that I wasn't fully paying attention. So I think if I reread this, I might like this one more than the first one. But honestly, I'm probably going to reread this kind of soon because I just don't remember it as well as I want. Because it was a whirlwind, honestly. But these are YA thrillers, which I know people kind of hate on, but these are the best YA thrillers, the only YA thrillers that matter, period. Y'all still hating. It's about to be summertime and y'all still hating. Like, do I give a fuck? No, not one. How many fucks do I get? Zero. Exactly. So therefore, your comment is irrelevant. And I relate to Pip, the main character, so much. Pippa is literally me. Like, I adore her. She's probably, like, the nicer version of me. I did prefer the mixed media elements in here. There's literally pictures of evidence. And if you listen to the audiobook of this, it has, like, the interview tapes. While the other one does have things like that, too, it's definitely mixed media. The audiobook still has kind of, like, that tape feel. I don't know why, like, in this, it's more of, like, a podcast. It took the amazing mixed media elements of book one and then added even more into this book. And I it was just so good and I did not see the choice coming at all and ugh, I just love seeing Pip and Ravi and it was just so cute and I can't wait for the last book which comes out later this year. The next prompt was first book in a series and for that I decided to go with Desperate Measures by Katie Roberts and this series is very 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 like steamy. It's basically um I'm trying to not say <laughs> words that would incriminate me this is basically kind of like a really 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 steamy romance retelling series of like disney villains so this one is jafar and jasmine and their relationship i was like a little bit confused on this world because it kind of gives me like mafia vibes and i was like what's going on so i think that if i continue on in the series i will understand the world a little bit more and i'm really excited for that and to get more into like the underworld because we did see some other characters characters like Hades we saw in here and it's just a lot of fun so I'm really excited to continue on in the series. This is the second book that I read by Katie Roberts and she is really good at writing her scenes. Okay like we this one's actually deceivingly short because the audiobook is still fairly long for how short it looks but I did give this four stars and I'm really excited to continue on in this series. So this book I originally pulled for my chance card but I also 
used it for set in present day just because I didn't start it until after that prompt dropped because it was in the last roll while chance card was in the second to last but I didn't start it till you know after the last rolls and everything so I counted it for both and that is the Black Flamingo by Dean Atta and I gave this book 3.25 stars which I feel like is very unpopular this book has really really high ratings on Goodreads and I really really wanted to love this as a fellow biracial queer human being I really thought that I would love this and I do really like YA contemporaries in verse that talk about hard-hitting topics that's why I really like Elizabeth Acevedo even though YA contemporary is not my favorite and just something about that combination really hits different for me but this one unfortunately did not it's kind of a three star I feel like this will be really really valuable for younger teens and even like preteens, like maybe 12 to 14 or 15 I feel like could really get something amazing out of this and also white people I feel like could get something really good out of this as well and even non-queer people I feel like could get something really good out of this but it kind of explained to me things that I already knew and the experience I already went through and because the way this was written um in verse I feel like it didn't dive deep enough into the topics that I wanted and if it did I would have related to it more but I feel like there wasn't even enough substance in here for me to relate to it just kind of brush the surface which I feel like is good for people who are going through that still or are not really educated on what it's like but since I've already been through everything that this character has gone through it kind of just felt like okay like what it wasn't that the representation was bad it just wasn't in depth enough for me to relate to it at all um and I do talk about this really pretty in-depth in a review on my goodreads if you want to check that out i will have my goodreads link down below and i really do wish that i loved this i just didn't the biggest complaint that i saw looking at reviews for this is that it wasn't long enough which is what i completely agree with this needed to be longer and i think taking out the verse part of it would have helped a lot in here the main character michael does write poems and monologues which i feel like still could have been a part of this i just don't think everything else needed to be in verse two i think that part could have been written normal and then have like the poems and monologues sporadically put in throughout the rest of the book i feel like that's the best way that this book could have been written and so yeah it's nothing wrong with the book it just didn't really connect with me personally which was unfortunate because i feel like out of any book i should have connected to this one really heavily and the last prompt was to read a book outside of a genre that you normally read and for that I went with like dystopian sci-fi I used to read a lot more dystopian when I was younger but I haven't really read it in years so that was The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood and I only read about a third of this I believe so I read about 115 pages of this the other two-thirds I actually read for school back in like November, December, and January, and I just never get around to finishing it. I give this book three stars, and it's really not the book's fault at all. I think that this book could have done a lot for me, and I think I could have really enjoyed it, but I started this for AP Literature, and AP Literature is honestly the worst English class that I've ever had, and it wasn't even the curriculum. It was my teacher, and if you guys have ever been on my sprint, you know that I talk about that teacher a lot. I used to when I was in her class. The teacher, okay? The teacher. This woman was so crusty and dusty and old. She literally was not only a terrible teacher in general like she didn't know how to teach okay first of all and second of all she was just a terrible human being she wouldn't let us use they them pronouns for a singular human being we can only use them when referring to a group so we could only use he him and she her which is terrible because that makes the class feel very um not accepting for people and then also she dressed up as a native american for halloween and that's literally only a, a taste a taste of how horrible she actually was and so anything kind of associated with that class brings negative emotions for me so i feel like the book i have kind of negative emotions around because of that class that this book didn't actually need but like i just had to go with my gut so i gave it three stars but i don't really think it's the book's fault honestly i'm gonna watch the show and i think that i'll like that a lot better yeah and hopefully one day i'll actually reread this and really really enjoy it because i loved the feminist values and themes and but she, when she was talking about it, she just made it 10 times more complicated and it confused me. And then she's just a horrible human being. And so this book did nothing wrong. 
okay it was me it was my experience with the first two thirds of this book that kind of ruined it for me but as I said one day hopefully I'll reread this and really get something amazing out of it and I plan on watching this show so I'm really excited for the show actually so these are five of the eight books that I ended up finishing for Bookopolathon and just counting the pages that I read so for float plan I only counted 70 pages and for um, the Handmaid's Tale I only counted 115 pages with all of that. I read a total of 1,756 pages which is amazing. That's literally more than I read all of February because February yeah, was a rough reading month. Honestly I don't think I've ever read this much in two days before like in a short period of time which is crazy to me and I'm so happy that I was able to read this much and again thank you to Becca. Bookopolathon is one of my favorite events and I feel like this is one of the true events that we still have in the community that unites so many people to Together. I feel like a lot of other events are just they're small niche to specific groups which is fine I love those too but I remember back in the day before I had a booktube channel before anything we used to have those big readathons that united everybody and everybody would participate and we don't really have those anymore and I feel like this readathon is the closest that we have to that and it just is so fun but yeah that's all that I have for this video today and I will see you guys in my next one Bye everybody. You're always posting up pictures, trying to look like you're winning. I'm writing rhymes in the kitchen, soaking in moments we live in. Yeah, you got the nerve to be on me, faking your life for the IG. If you got my number, don't ask.